Hey there, you're tuning in to Loki by Oki, our easygoing sessions for hotel professionals where we chat about industry trends, issues, and solutions. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you're calling in from. Today we have a super exciting episode. We're going to talk about front desk upselling and hear confessions of a uh, renowned industry legend, front desk upsell uh, uh, training consultant. Uh, who uh, I've known for many, many years, who has done front desk capsule training for about 14 years. And we are so, so excited to have him on the podcast. Um, why are we talking about front desk upselling? For us at Oki, this is a really important touch point. We, we have recently uh, launched a new product that relates to front desk upselling. And it's a really critical touch point if you look at the entire guest journey and trying to uh, create amazing guest experiences and derive revenue off of that. Uh, technology can play a part, but training and the human touch is equally important. And today we're going to talk about combining those two together. And we have the perfect guest to be joining us. Welcome, Pablo Torres. Hi, Eric. How are you? Hello, everyone. Very good. Calling in live from Alicante. That's right. Yeah. Very, very good. Thanks for joining us, Pablo. Super, super happy to have you with us. Here. Yeah. We met at uh, WTM in London last week, and uh, you have just re re released uh, your new book, which is amazing. Congratulations on that. Very much. And thank okay. you for taking part of it as well, because one of the episodes, <laughs> one yeah. of the chapters, <laughs> it's co-written yeah, by you. So thanks. Yeah, thank, thanks so much. Hey, Pablo, um, you've been working about 14 years uh, within uh, ancillary revenue, within front desk upselling. Um, can you tell the audience what is a front desk upsell consultant and uh, why why is is what you do important for hotels when it comes to front desk upselling? Mm -hmm. Okay, usually hotels, uh, many hotels do upsell and cross sell internally, but usually when they request help from from outside outside company or from a consultant, it's because they need they can do better. Mm. And they realize that there's potential, there's untapped potential that they're not, they're not materializing, be it because they don't have the right tech tools or because they don't have the right training for the team to be able to, to develop it. Uh, and that's when this person or this company comes in, checks what's going on at the moment, how they're doing it, what are the current resources that they have, and the current style in terms of upselling, and change the necessary tools and, and fine-tunes both the tech side and the team to be able to optimize those that revenue. So so you, you've been doing this for many, many years. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what what are the typical challenges that hotels have, uh, that that and and how how do you help hotels overcome them? I mean, good thing is when they reach out to you is because they realize they have a problem. So the yeah. challenge comes earlier when they don't know what they don't know. That that is easy. They don't even realize how much potential there is there. So main challenges once you get there, <laughs> yeah, it tend to be number one, it's um, that they might believe that they're already doing very good. So mm -hmm. they question if you can really improve the results they are achieving because they say, well, look at my numbers. I've been doing this and that for the last few years. But from experience, you know, comparing it with Homestead and, and similar um, hotels, that there is potential to do much, much more than that. that that's uh, one hand. Uh, well, I would say three, three main challenges. That's one. Second one would be when it comes to, to how they, they do the upsell or the cross-sell. So it tends to be usually manually. So it takes very long time team is not really motivated because it means extra work for them. And in some cases, they don't even get a, an incentive. So it's, uh, why would I do this? It's what the mentality, mentality of, the, of the front desk. And then the third main challenge would be the team. They might not be trained uh, to, to do upsell. So the hotels just rely on the one or two team members that they enjoy doing it. But then you have everybody else who there's no, no real motivation. They haven't been trained. So it's like, yet, why would I do this? So we just, you just rely on, on lack or, or the proactiveness of this couple of, of uh, individuals. When, it, when you have the entire team who, if they were trained, they were motivated and engaged, then the results would work. Mm -hmm. That's super interesting. I think let's take them off one by one. So in the first scenario, I guess the um, manager or the revenue manager or someone contacts you because when you arrive and they think, no, 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 we don't need your help, Pablo. <laughs> we already have good results. That's not the people that contacted you, obviously. Yeah, so it is. How, how do you how do you make them realize that no, you can in fact actually do better? Like, 
how do you get that buy-in? Uh, that change management is very interesting. Yeah, so usually in those cases with the big companies, large hotel companies who headquarters or regional level, they've heard about you or your company and they say, well, I know these guys can help me or can help my portfolio, so let's establish it in my hotels. And then you have individual hotels, they get on the defensive side. I don't need help. I'm doing good enough. Thank you very much. So um, what you, you show them there, that you're there to help them. Mm -hmm. And if they do better, obviously the results are going to uh, better increase and they're going to look better in terms of in front of their regional head, whoever it is, has decided to implement that. So consultant is always there to help him. So perform better, to achieve better results, to be more efficient and more effective, to train him. So it, that's the, the main thing. I, I'm here to help you. Develop. And, and how, how does that link with uh, point number three, that the team, uh, like some, some people are, are just natural sellers, but I don't know. I don't think there is in the job description that you should be commercial necessarily to work in the front desk, right? And it so, should be. But it should, should maybe be, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, you have to sell to do everything. I have to sell, I had to sell when I had to borrow my dad's car when I was small, <laughs> you know, younger. <laughs> Uh, I think sales is important for everything, but, um, how, how do you motivate? I, I'm, I, I can imagine it's easy to motivate people once they've tried it and they see success, but how do you get to that point? So in teams, it, the, the pattern repeats itself in every team. So you usually have like one or two individuals that sell, sell a lot, you know, I just mentioned earlier, then you have some team members that either because in the night shift or because they don't care, they, the results are very, very low. Uh, so you have to focus on the other one, which is like 80%. Yeah. So in a, in a team of 10 people, you might have one or two top performers, one or two who mm -hmm. won't do anything, but then you have six, seven okay. who are the ones that you can push. Now, previously, you only had the two proactive ones selling and the, the other ones were reactive. Well, if the customer asks me for an upsell, I'll offer it to them. Otherwise, I'll just do my normal check-in, end of the story. If you manage to persuade those seven team members in the middle to get engaged, actually train it and they see the results, then obviously the results are going to increase a lot. How do you do that? Showing them that it's a win-win-win. So the hotel is going to make more money, which is going to secure their job long term. They're going to enjoy the shift more because they're going to engage with customers and they're going to see that the customers have a better experience. So if they really like hospitality and they enjoy seeing their customers have a great experience at the property, then more money for, for the hotel, more money for themselves, so usually because they're going to get an incentive and then the customer enjoys experience better. So when they leave the hotel, the customer check out, sometimes it's the same person who checked them in. And the customer tells them, oh, thank you. I love the suite. Meal was great. Breakfast, we loved it. Oh, the spa was amazing. Thank you very much. So that feeling that you help the, your customers enjoy their stay even more, yeah. that's really fulfilling. Yeah, yeah. That's why I do what I do. I've always been a pleaser. I think you too, like in people in hospitality uh, typically have. But it's like the, the, the challenge that we hear time and time again from hotel chains all over the place is that uh, staff turnover is such a big issue. Um, how do you see staff turnover actually being kind of mitigated by having successful people at the front desk? Do they stay longer? People are great, better at upselling. Why do you think so? Well, two main reasons. One, I just mentioned about the, the sense of fulfillment at, mm. at work, and then obviously the, the incentive. So the yeah. thing is, usually in, in hospitality, salaries tend to be relatively low or lower than in other industries. Uh, and I've seen, I, I, was, I stayed for many years in London, doing a lot of trainings in London hotels. And I saw many people leaving, going from front office hotel jobs to corporate front office mm -hmm. because the, the times were better and the salary was slightly better. Now, if I pay, let's say a thousand euros, dollars, whatever, a month, and my competitor is paying 1100 it's 10% of the salary. So it's a big difference for a receptionist to, to consider switching jobs and going to another company because the role is going to be very, very similar. Now, if in my property, I give you the chance for you to increase your own salary through incentives, so you can generate an extra 20, 30% of your salary. Yeah. So you're going to end up getting 1300 at my property with a better atmosphere than my competitor is in 1100 So most likely, you stay with me because you enjoy your, your job and you know that you can generate that revenue. And I've seen people in Europe making three times their salary on it. Yeah, that's, in, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone is probably happy. The, Absolutely. Own, the owners, at least if they're not happy, they should be. <laughs> hey, um, 
So sometimes we speak to hotels who say, ah, you know what, we're not, we're not going to incentivize our, our upsell team for, for upselling. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always say, well, if you don't do that, it's not going to work because incentives drive behavior. Um, what would be your argument to a hotel owner or whoever sets the decision around the incentives, why they need to be incentivizing their team? I mean, traditionally, sales team, they, have, they always had a bonus based on the results, and that's normal. Salespeople, they are, their job is to sell, so you sell more, you get an extra. That's, everybody understands that. It's always been like that. So now you're expecting your reception team, your front office team, or spa, bar, whoever, but we focus on the reception, that part of their job is to sell, to generate extra income for the company. So what, why wouldn't they have an incentive if you yeah. always gave an incentive for sales? It's just, a, it's just a change of mindset, to be honest. Um, the thing is, if you give the, usually salaries year on year, they, based on the countries, but usually go with inflation, so little increases year by year. If you show your team that it's in their hands to manage how much they can increase their salary based on the incentive they get, really is a booster. And call it money calls money. So when you start the first few months and staff start seeing on their pay slip that extra one incentive, 80 euro, 100 euro, 150 dollars, most of the month, they start seeing it, seeing on there. So knowing that they can spend that money, that is theirs now, a month later, then usually the results start increasing again and again. Hey, so having covered those first three points, mm -hmm. then I, I guess... One of the things that you do is like helping staff identify, here is a guest that's going to be interested in this. We're going to offer this. The, the tricky thing at the, at the front desk is, of course, you, you have a lot of people waiting maybe. Like, who do you target? What do you offer? How do you know what to offer? If you only have one shot, you, be, you better be on point, right? Mm -hmm. What are some tricks that you can share uh, about this? It's about patterns and personalization. So if you have a tool that helps you personalize, it's even better. It gives you the information beforehand. And, and then in the human touch, it's about reading customers. So mm -hmm. usually when I, I do the training sessions, I always start with the fact that before you even start speaking with a customer, you already have 50 touch points of information, data points. So you see the, the people coming into you and you see how they dress, if they're rushed or not, their mood, the language they're speaking. They might be queuing. You might be checking in somebody else. But the couple behind the customer you're checking in you really, you more 90% you're right of the type of case they're going to be. Your experience, reception. And, and then and they tell who, you. Who do you want them to be, to be receptive for upselling? Who is a good one to target? Usually couples and, and people celebrating mm -hmm. is, the, is the easiest one. People who travel far. So yeah. usually business uh, customers are the most challenging because they go to the hotel because the company send them there. Yeah. It's not really their decision. They might get an extra, they might park in or breakfast, but it's unlikely they get, they get any other extras. But if you have a special location, that anniversary or birthday is once a year or honeymoon, once in a lifetime, then once you're there, what you want to trigger on the customer's brain is the question, why not? I went to Bali. So since I'm here, I don't know when I'm going to come back. So why not go in for that suite? I'm in mm -hmm. Cancun. So wow, I don't know when I'm going to come back to Mexico. So why not go in for that nice massage? And, and how, how do you do that as a front office agent? So you know they're staying in a, in a standard room, whatever room type, mm -hmm. and then you have, you know you have availability on this suite. How, how, do, you, how do you pitch it? So getting to know them a bit. The thing is, check in the conversation. It's two minutes. That's all you have, basically, right? So you have to ask the right questions to get as much information as possible in the, within those two minutes. Obviously, not every guest wants to, to have a conversation. Maybe language barrier, maybe very tired. So... You cannot try with absolutely everyone. That will be a mistake. But if you see the receptive, receptive, if, if they are that kind of type of customers we're, we're talking about, it's about knowing what kind of needs they have, if they have any plans for their stay, if they're open to some suggestions, and then only then, then you throw in what you think is, is best for them, what should step. So it's not about like throwing information to see who wants to buy it. It's, I'm going to suggest something to you because you told me you're here for your birthday, your special gift, yeah. to see your family, whatever it is. But helping you improve your stay. Yeah. So um, you've been doing this for 14 years. So you must have seen like an evolution from what we could call like, I don't know, legacy uh, upselling to like modern. And uh, who knows what it's going to be like only in a year from now, right? With everything that's going on. 
how would you classify like traditional versus like next generation upselling that we're already seeing today? I think traditional was more like hard selling. So try with everyone. It's like the McDonald's sort of, uh, you want to make it a menu? Yeah. You try with everyone, just out of statistics, you make a lot of money. But that's not the style. Hotels, you want to make sure that guests enjoy their stay, that they want to come back because they had a good experience. So we go from this hard selling from the past to the social selling, to the suggestive selling that we have now. Now, if you put a layer of technology in there, it makes things much easier for, for receptionists because you might have the information already in the PMS that is sort of guiding you. You know which rooms are available, which was the rate that you'll be charging your customers. So it's just a matter of using your experience and your knowledge as a receptionist to read the guest behind in front of you mm. and then suggest that item that you know they're going to say yes. So it, at the end of the day, it's, it's a sales funnel. So instead of, if you have 100 check-ins, instead of trying with 100 customers and getting five to say yes to your suite, you only try with those 15 that you know will say yes. So you increase your, your positive results with less effort. And you do that by simply uh, looking at the arrivals list and saying, uh, where are they coming from? Booking source, room type booked, et cetera. And then you combine that with the read that you have when they're actually in front of you? Or yeah, this should be, yeah I, I'm, this should be also ideally an ex support from the champion, from his manager, however you want to call them, depending on the, on the hotel, to, to make sure that the team is aware of the rooms available. But then again, you have technology that can yeah. give you the yeah. information. Yeah. You should have a target as well, which again, it can be done through technology. So in the past was a manual, okay, we should be doing this batch today, or, or I think we should be doing this batch in the month. But nowadays with technology, you have those targets and you can see easily on your dashboard how you're doing compared to your own target as an individual compared to the team target. And that's also positive. As long as it's a positive uh, competition for the team, it's fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially if you create a lot of winners. I loved your comment around maybe don't focus on the superstars, but the, the big uh, chunk in the middle. So sometimes we speak to hoteliers and they're like, we love that Oki is building a digital solution for this because it cre can create consistency. And the, the big advantage of having a consultant coming on site or whatever it is, is that you have a massive positive effect that creates sky rocketing results but then it typically dwindles. How do you think a hotel can successfully maintain like consistency in their, in their upselling so that they don't have to think that they need people on site every, I don't know, every two, three months? Uh, what do you think is like the best practice there? So it's important to have uh, engaged champions. One day a supervisor, it doesn't need to be the, doesn't need, sorry, to be the FOM. It could be a good supervisor, a, a senior receptionist that likes what, uh, but it, all that it's uh, rated to, to upsell. So if that person drives a team and then you have the support maybe for a, a consultant, trainer, or company that every yeah. now and then it's also going with you down the, down the path, that's the, that's the best thing you can do. So making sure you have your monthly goals set up, that you keep your, your team on their toes, you keep it relevant. That, that is not like someone came once, told me something about upselling and they left, but it stays there relevant. And, and, and the, it's part of their daily operations. Well, what's the, so you mentioned it, it can be all, it doesn't really matter the title. What's the profile of this uh, champion? What, what, what does that person need to be like or care about? So usually someone who is very positive, who wants to grow professionally. So they want to show to their bosses that they can do better than that. that they can keep growing. So it could be a, a, a receptionist who wants to be a supervisor, Mm -hmm. wants to be a, a system FOM or FOM or an FOM who wants to be a rooms manager. So more involved into data, numbers, tracking and showing the how the evolution of the results to the to the management. And, and they are there to stay for the long term, also important, right? So that yeah. if you have turnover in the team, at least that person is the steady steady function. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. So the new ones who are arriving, they see that pass in the team and they just yeah. join you new. Know. Mm -hmm. How is that person incentivized? Is that like on a smaller percentage on the group sales or something? Or Usually those profiles, because they are more senior, they have different roles. They don't have that many chances of upselling themselves. So ideally, what you have to give them, it's a percentage of the total, of the overall yeah. results of the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fascinating, fascinating. What, what's, uh, uh, give, give us some funny, funny anecdotes. You must have seen a lot of funny, funny upsells. What, what's like uh, something that comes to mind uh, about 
maybe like an unexpected upsell or or like someone who ended up spending uh, really a lot of money for something that, where you felt like you could deliver just an amazing guest experience to someone who maybe w- where it was a little bit unexpected because it's maybe quite obvious someone appears with their partner we're here for a honeymoon that upsell like you said is pretty straightforward but there there must have been many uh that are not so straightforward but end up with a fantastic result what, what comes to mind yeah absolutely so the one i mentioned earlier about like staff having like triple you know, incentive and from the salary was in a in a luxury city hotel in europe and they had suites they had like penthouse suites they went for like twenty five thousand euro extra per night so wow uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so when you have someone coming in and say oh you know i booked book this room we have this penthouse. oh yeah sure sometimes all, uh, uh, it's good to mention this because um in the eyes of the receptionist it might sound expensive so some, sometimes the receptionist they they hold themselves because they say well this is too expensive i can't how could i offer this per night but for the customer they're fine and the thing yeah. is when the experiential value of the stay is that good the monetary value is not that important for the customer. no no and that's why you have to try to see for for receptionists to see that so those crazy numbers i mean they happen every now and then and also important in, in terms of how the type of customers change so in the past was like 50 year old american couple what the stereotype but now now you might have a young chinese couple of guys who are in their 20s uh who are wearing a tracksuit mm. they're billionaires exactly and yeah. you know stereotype they wouldn't look like that so no. you, obviously you cannot judge a, a book by the cover here, but no. you have to make sure to, to open your mind and that's why it's that important to interact with customers yeah have that little conversation to find out about them so me- I don't want to say that upselling is easy, but um, if you're in a luxurious hotel with beautiful rooms, you, you can talk a lot around what what's so special about them. H- how do you become good at upselling when you're like in a not so fancy four star hotel, for example? But highlight what you have, and sometimes hotels miss that. So I've seen many hotels where they say, "Okay, we have let's say 100 rooms, 80 standard and 20 superior." Mm. But are all standard the same? Because mm. some customers might appreciate having a room away from the corridor or having a king size bed or having a higher floor because they might have some certain view that you live there, you don't appreciate. It might not be the Eiffel Tower, but it might be better than a wall in front of your window on the yeah. first floor. Yeah. So internally, you have to understand like what are the guests valuing on your product yeah. and then get a little bit of it's, and that's what it, ancillary is about. It's like get the, the, a bit of extra on different items or different yeah. products so you can build on top of that. Yeah. Exciting. And, and, and if we think about, as we, as we round off, uh, Pablo, when you think about that we've gone from no personalization, the McDonald's approach, to uh, personalization supported by technology, what about four or five years from now? What's front desk upselling going to be like? And do you think receptionists are still there? Is it fully automated online check-in where you don't meet anyone at all? And and I'm asking specifically, I would say let's let's not talk about the lean budget hotels, but like four-star, five-star luxury. Well, I mean, we've seen, especially since the pandemic, a uh, big challenge, global challenge when it comes to talent in the in industry. There's less and less young people that want to come to this industry. I believe human service will be luxury in the coming years. So low budget hotels will be, everything will be automated. We have it already. Some hotels where you have just a couple of people working, facing customers, the rest is automated or outsourced. So if luxury will be to have someone carrying your luggage, to, to have someone open the door of your car, to have someone checking you in face to face and dealing with you. So the, the receptionist, as we understand it now, will go into a role that is going to be a mix of receptionist, concierge, guest relations, duty manager, all at once. Yeah. Because it will be there to give that human connection that the machine, doesn't matter how much, how many layers of AI you put on top of that, cannot cover. Yes. We still want to have that human connection. And if you don't want it, you can always go to a low-cost hotel and have no interaction whatsoever. You know, it's like Airbnb a hotel cell. You can stay in a very, very luxurious Airbnb without ever seeing any any staff. And that's that's a choice. But if you want to have a luxury experience, I mean, a robot cannot give you a massage. You know? 
the best for the time being. I, I also don't, well, you never know, but I would also say the big thing about hospitality is making human connections. <laughs> and um, I have a hard time seeing how that will not be the case in the future. Um, before we go into the, the, the second part of this, uh, just want to share uh, how exciting it is and also to the, to the entire audience that uh, you can hear how knowledgeable Pablo is around this topic. We are extremely excited to announce that Pablo will be, will be joining Oki uh, and, and uh, working together with us uh, to help uh, share this knowledge and know-how and inspire uh, hoteliers that are utilizing Oki's front desk upsell solution. Uh, and uh, I think it will really supercharge uh, the results. So uh, super excited to have you on the team, Pablo. Thank you. Same here. I was thinking about when we, I was thinking, yeah, I heard the bell. <laughs> I was thinking about when we had beers together, you know, like five, six, eight years ago. It's, uh, it's amazing to be, uh, to be here working together. So very, very excited to be working together with you from all of us, uh, but also uh, uh, super excited to be um, hearing what our customers will think. And uh, it's incredible what you, the amount of knowledge you have around this. So Pablo, uh, we have mm -hmm. come to the shameless plug. Uh, in this part, you, you have a couple of minutes, uh, completely shameless, talk about whatever you want to talk about. Go ahead. <laughs> Book, which happened to be here, I don't know, by coincidence. <laughs> so, actually, it was you and someone else at an event a few months ago who triggered me to, to write this book. So, uh, we were having a coffee at one of the coffee breaks on the, on the event, and uh, you told me, you know about our Silent Revenue, why don't you write a book? I was like, get me thinking. And then half an hour later, you know, Speaking with somebody else told me the same thing. I was like, okay, maybe. So I started researching online, and it's true, there's a lot of uh, about ancillary revenue from the airline industry online, like Amazon, loads of really, really thick books. But there was nothing really that I liked about hotel ancillary revenue, and that's what made me write this book. And so it's a, it's a sort of going through the customer journey uh, with the hotel, with the hotelier, and showing how much extra you can get if you plug all the different parts of the, of the customer journey. So technology, human interaction, training your team, motivating incentives, and all it goes there. So 10 chapters, 216 pages of, of knowledge here, including yeah. your knowledge. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, awesome. Congrats on that, Pablo. Uh, very cool to be an author, uh, I guess. <laughs> uh, but amazing to have, uh, have put your, your knowledge out there. Uh, it's it's really interesting. I think before COVID, it's at least from my perspective, hotels did not care as much about ancillary as they do today. There's a huge change. Uh, we see it as a top priority, upselling, cross-selling uh, in a good way. Uh, uh, one thing, if I can add, because in many destinations now, the ADR is very stretched and mm -hmm. customers are starting to, to feel that the, you know, the, the elasticity of the, of the price is coming to an end in some destinations. Now, if you cannot really stretch that much, the room revenue, what can you do? Push and line revenue. Yeah. There's yeah. a high percentage of, of uh, net revenue that can come from there. We, we even have hotel chains that are uh, on purpose uh, giving a lower ADR to a certain segment and do a marketing push because they have they know through uh, using an upselling solution like, okay, how much they're going to spend if they book. So it's a, if you look at the total value of that customer, it's actually a profitable one, although the ADR might be lower. Um, Pablo, thank you so much. I will try to summarize this in um, 30, 40 seconds. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to miss a lot of good ones. When a hotel contacts a, an upselling consultant, it's mainly because of three, uh, because someone in there that realizes they have, we need help or it's being pushed down from, from the central. The, the challenges that the front desk upsell consultant typically have is that the team thinks, ah, we don't need your help, we're doing well. <laughs> um, or there is a, a lot of manual work. There's no, um, you're coming there, you're gonna say you're gonna do something more, but they're saying, oh, we already have 45 things to do. How can we fit this in? And typically there's no incentive. Why, why should we do this? Um, and typically you would have two superstars, 80% uh, in the middle and a couple of people who don't care whatsoever. And the way to overcome this uh, is to focus on those people in the middle, make them successful, implement an incentive system, Ensure that you have a motivated uh, coach uh, who can be someone from the front of this team or the manager or supervisor, you name it, someone driven, ambitious, and positive who wants to grow. Uh, 
that can then you can then have a sort of train the trainer approach with. That's how you drive consistency as a hotel and don't have to worry about paying super expensive consultancy fees all the time. Although I have to say consultancy fees in this case have carry a very good ROI. But um, just saying that because a lot of hoteliers will be thinking about that. Um, front desk upselling has evolved from a maybe a consistent approach where you just say, do you want price with that when you're checking in? And you might have some wins, but it's not really the fabulous guest experience that everyone is looking for into this personalization and driving revenue through interaction. Successful upselling today is the ability to ask the right questions. And on the basis of that, uh, offer the right upsell. Utilizing technology to already pull availability rates, um, have a script on how you could share it, maybe pictures to show, uh, and of course, tracking commission and, and automating everything. All of those things uh, are the things that we have built uh, with our front desk upsell solution. And finally, uh, it's all about focusing on, on delivering a fantastic guest experience, driving more revenue for the front office team and actually coming, maybe, uh, maybe not having staff turnover as being as big of an issue an anymore because you can really drive fulfillment. I love that, what you said in the beginning. People can earn more money, but they can also feel more fulfilled. Um, so with that, I think we can, we can end this episode. Pablo, it's been amazing. You're a, uh, I don't know what it's called, like a bucket of knowledge. That's probably not the right way to say it. But thank you so much, Pablo. It's no, been thank a real you. honor to have you here and uh, speak to you soon. I appreciate it. Thanks, Eric. Thanks a lot.